Greetings and salutations, accounting technology fans, and welcome to another Accountech Bytes. There's only one place, really, that I can start any roundup of the week in accounting technology news, and that is, of course, with artificial intelligence. So, we've had a slew of announcements about new tools and products using the new generation of uh, generative artificial intelligence. Uh, we had Pixie. Uh, Carbon and Canopy over in the States all launching uh, within the past week or so. Uh, Carbon and Canopy seem to be more around content so their tools can draft emails, client responses. Um, in Carbon's case here you can prioritize your inbox based on uh, sentiment and tone uh, summarize long discussions to see whether you actually want to delve into a lengthy email chain uh, schedule updates uh, that kind of thing and uh, so the canopy one across the pond here uh, lets you rephrase messages uh, correct spelling and grammar and craft emails using keywords so yeah promising uh, maybe maybe not um, Accountants might not be scheduling their retirement in the Maldives just yet. Um, the Pixie one, I, I think, was quite interesting. Um, so as a sort of practice management tool, both in the UK and the US, and they their tool allows you, it, it sort of digs into the back end and extracts documents. So the example that Celso, the uh, Pixie owner, um, uh, uh, CEO, sorry, um, uh, gave me, I think you probably see it on his LinkedIn post better. So the client needs help with a bank loan and it, it is emailed in and GPT has drafted a response to them. So uh, did I say GPT? I meant co-pilot. Um, so there's, there are the figures they need and it's found the documents they need and attach them and you can then edit or send that email all very interesting stuff uh, when chat gpt first emerged at the back end of last year there was a lot of talk about using it for content for your website and that kind of thing so it, it feels like it's moving slowly towards the epicenter of accounting it's it's sort of within that first concentric circle isn't it but uh you know a, a, a lot more uh promise perhaps but i i do feel it does need the the integrations uh the, the data and without that um you do wonder wh how effective these types of products would be which i guess is why it's so good that the practice management lot have taken it over um TechCrunch has written about Intuit's shift towards artificial intelligence. It's, it's always interesting seeing more mainstream product, whoops, more mainstream products writing about the world of accounting and tax tech. Um, they, they, they tend to either be very top level or quite investor focused perhaps, or focus on one tiny niche detail that perhaps the writer in question is having issues with. This one is quite top line, um, talking about uh, the, 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 the sort of plans. So they've got 700 um, AI related patents into it. And one really good point is that it does have this, this artillery, this oil that um, AI machines need to be effective, I guess, which is data. So not only from their tax and accounting products, but also their personal finance product, Credit Karma and MailChimp that they acquired a few years back. So yeah, and I guess their comments from analysts here at all oh, the biggest challenges, that, that's an analyst voice, by the way, all oh, the biggest challenges are that Intuit is, is trying to augment AI into its current product without actually trying to uh, cause a revolution in the industry. Um, I, I get where they're coming from, but I would slightly challenge that. I would say that for any challenger from an AI background, 
to spin up a product that can ingest a tax code and relevant tax cases, then communicate with clients to get the relevant documentation and, and file the taxes, the time that that would take versus a current incumbent to get hold of the artificial intelligence stuff, mm, you know, I, 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 I know who I'd back in that situation, but it'd be interesting to see how that develops. Uh, one more on the AI beat, and this one got from Jason Stats, who uh, has found Parsio, so it's automatic data extract, uh, data extraction, should I say, with AI powered document parser. So it's it's pulling data from PDFs, emails, uh, let's take a look, invoices. So it's doing all that um, automatically. And then, uh, yeah, I'm from emails and then syncing with a bunch of other products. So yeah, in uh, interesting stuff. Away from the AI beat for now then, and this came up from our Any Answers community. Robbie T is asking, where now after Digita disintegrates sure that's the right term robbie t but i can see what you're doing um the 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 integration between thompson reuters digital and and zero seems to have gone uh the the seamless cycle of productivity seems to have seams again so robbie t is back on the csvs i, I don't have any background detail on this so do get in touch if you do, but it seems like a backward step for both products concerned. And it's back to that integration thing. Um, the cloud accounting tools work well when they integrate with other pieces of software. So, you know, uh, we shall see what happens there. What's next? The podcast. So this was the audio from one of our Tech Pulse shows that we did a little while ago, featuring Joe Cox and Ben Staker, both of whom founded their own e-commerce accounting firms, and they talk about the pitfalls and potential for uh, e-commerce for accountants. Uh, so do check that out, whether you get your podcasts, search for Accounting Web. Financial Force have rebranded to Certina, in enterprise times so you'll be surprised to learn that they are an enterprise resource planning software uh, built on the salesforce platform and sort of i guess pulling front and back end uh, of sort of business systems together on one customer record um as as steve brooks writes here it's quite an unusual thing to do in the software world when um uh, it's not an acquisition or a merger or some bad PR, but I guess they've just outgrown their name. Uh, the equivalent, I guess, would be Receipt Bank and Dext, which doesn't seem to have had too much of an adverse effect. So congratulations to all concerned there. A bit more general tech, this one, but could have business implications. So Google personal account users can, if they want to, uh, forget their password and use a pass key instead. So what could a pass key uh, be? So you try and sign in and you click there and you can use uh, whether it's um, fingerprint authentication or face scanner or something else. But uh, yeah, they um, uh, see Google did say that for business users on the workspace administrators uh, don't have that option right now but they'll be able to enable this soon and have you ever looked at a company website and been none the wiser as to what it actually does to earn a living well there's a gpt3 for that uh you just stick the website in and it translates it for you now i picked I've picked Translucent as an example, but I, I think their their site actually is quite nicely laid out. But um, because it's a, a new kid on the block, I thought I'd I thought I'd use it. Um, so I've you pop in the link there, explain me, please, and it uh, crunches their site 
into a little paragraph there. Website for multi entity finance teams, CFO super app integrates with these companies. So yeah, you know, they've done a pretty good job. Um, hopefully another thing that's fairly self-explanatory is the accounting technology email that's with your, in your inbox every Thursday. So if you don't already sign up for it, then do pop your email address in the box below and hit the yellow button. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you go into Accountex then um, next week, then do come and find me. I'll be stalking the conference hall on day one, trusty notebook in hand, looking for interesting things to write about. So do come and find me. If not, I'll see you next Friday. Bye for now.